HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy. HCAM News is live every Thursday from 6.30 until 7 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News, Health Director Sean McAuliffe talks the latest with the COVID-19 pandemic at the select board meeting. Hiller's varsity football hits the field in their home opener versus Medfield. And we have the latest Hiller's Fall to sports update. Plus, we'll keep you up to date with all the happenings in town. But first, Startline Brewery and the 26.2 Foundation honored the first woman to ever complete the Boston Marathon, Bobby Gibb. Startline Brewery is releasing a new IPA, which honors marathon pioneer Bobby Gibb. Bobby Gibb was the first woman to run the Boston Marathon back in 1966. This is Joe Baldiga, a director of the 26.2 Foundation, and, and I'm, I'm here this morning with... I'm Ted Twenty. I'm the co-founder and uh, manager of Startline Brewing Company in Hopkinton. Very happy to be here today. We have a big event where this is the canning of a special marathon beer by Startline Brewery. Yeah, Do you Joe. Want to talk about that. Yeah, a I will. Bit? We're, we're first off, we're we're just so fortunate to have started a partnership and become the first uh, corporate sponsor of the twenty six point two foundation right. foundation back uh, when we opened up several years ago. And each spring during marathon season, we launch the marathon or IPA, and the proceeds from these beers. It's the same recipe every year, and it's limited edition. Those proceeds go to the foundation. And this year, we're really doing it up. We are uh, recognizing Bobby Gibb, the first uh, female to win the recognized winner of the Boston Marathon. Uh, and we're using uh, some of the illustration and artwork from the book, The Girl Who Ran, uh, which is a, a fabulous kids book. And uh, we've used that artwork on the can. And uh, this year, our can release will be on Thursday, April 8th. Uh, we have a couple hundred cases of these cans. They're gonna be limited edition and they're gonna be highly sought after. So we're really excited about this because it's not only helping get the word out about uh, the 26.2 Foundation, but it's recognizing a, a historic runner uh, for the foundation and for the marathon. Not only is it great beer, but it's a great cause. And as uh, Mr. Twenty mentioned, they have been a strong supporter of the foundation and they were our cor first corporate sponsor. And the 26 Foundation does a lot of good things in the community. We're hoping to build a International Marathon Center, and we couldn't do it without the strong support of Startline Brewery and other corporate sponsors as well. So thank you very much, and this is a great beer, great occasion. We're very excited for it. Well, we're proud sponsors and uh, happy to be partners with you all on your journey for the not only the Marathon Center, but all that the foundation does in supporting marathoning. Uh, across the world. And should we get a little plug-in? I understand Startline Brewery is now open for business. So oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've been we've been getting through uh, all the challenges of the pandemic and uh, yeah, we are open. We are fortunate to have a, a full house uh, during our open hours. Uh, those are on the website. Uh, they kind of, we're going to keep expanding our hours as things come back and people get vaccinated. But the community support has been amazing. We've been very fortunate. Uh, with all the support that's been happening during awesome. the pandemic. Good. Hopefully we'll come this weekend. Right. All right. Excellent. Stay healthy, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you, Joe. Members of the 26.2 Foundation were happy to lend a hand during the making of the first cases of the IPA. Things are going wrong. There's a lot for me to look at to try to troubleshoot. Um, Today's going spectacular, though. Which 
I'm riding the wave of my Monday, which was also awesome. awesome. Right. Yeah. But yeah, everything comes through here, and then they come through these, and, and individually, I have to get my levels all set, and uh, normally there's a lot of beer I gotta dump right away because there's a lot of foam that's coming through these lines. Yeah. So, it looks worse than it is. I mean, some people cry a little bit. I did when I first started this job, but I got over it. <laughs> the Marathoner IPA will officially debut on Thursday, April 8th. Hopkinton Health Director Sean McAuliffe recently filled in the select board with the latest information on the COVID-19 pandemic in town. Here's a look. We'll have vaccinated over 1,360 people, um, a significant number of those residents of Hopkinton. Um, we wouldn't have been able to pull this off without the assistance of the fire department, the senior center staff, police department, and our resident volunteers in Medical Reserve Corps. Um, they all deserve recognition for the, uh, the significant effort and time that they put in to make these clinics successful. Um, we are preparing to open a municipally operated mass vaccination clinic with the towns of Ashland, Boylston, Holliston, North Borough, South Borough, and West Borough. We are waiting the mass DPH to approve our vaccine order uh, clinic operation will allow the participating communities to divert 25% of the doses that we receive to our individual communities. Um, that will, you know, put our local communities at a significant advantage. And one of the things that we're doing is we are hoping to get our hands on the Pfizer vaccine because the Pfizer vaccine can be administered to youth um, as young as 16. And that um, will help address an issue that I will get to in a second. Um, the clinic will be operated at the Westboro Doubletree. Um, and I'm hoping that will be in operation within the next two weeks. Um, the governor has been in communication with our state representatives and um, we've been green lighted again, we're just waiting for the vaccine to uh, be allocated to us. Um, so our efforts have contributed to our community's above average vaccination rates. Um, as of Thursday, over 95% of our 75 plus and older population um, have been fully vaccinated, which is tremendous. 84% um, of our 65 to 74 year olds have received their first dose. And I believe 48% of those have been fully vaccinated. Um, the 35% uh, of our 50 to 64 and 28% of our 30 to 49% um, are of our 30 to 49 year old population have received their first dose. So, you know, especially in our high risk groups, we've done a tremendous job at getting people vaccinated. And I would argue that's why we're not seeing illness in um, those upper age groups. Um, that said, we're in the midst of a surge that is affecting our zero to 20 year old population. Um, and they're being affected disproportionately. We took a look at data from the holiday um, surge and compared it to the surge that we're ex we've been experiencing in March, um, we could actually say February to March of this year. Um, during the holiday surge, 33% of the population that uh, fell ill fell into that zero to 20% uh, or that zero to 20 year old age group. Right now, we're seeing between 50 and 66% of the affected population being in that zero to 28 or uh, 20 year old age group. Um, we, um, um, at, so when, when we further dive into the data, um, you know, it's what, it's April 6th and we have over 170 children under the age of 19 in quarantine. At this rate, I, I believe by the end of the week, we'll have 
approximately 5% of our children, zero to 19 in quarantine. We just got a, uh, we got a, at least 78 more people in today. Um, now we believe that the majority of this outbreak, it has nothing to do with the school reopening. Um, we've had really no evidence to date of, um, or during the month of March and April of school associated outbreaks. This outbreak is really related to um, it's unsupervised activity outside of the home, extracurricular activities outside of school, small gatherings, parties, and exposure from um, a parent or family member. We are going to take a quick time out, but a whole lot more ahead, including the latest in Hiller's sports and happenings in town. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller's Varsity Football recently hosted their home opener versus Medfield, and it was a very exciting game. Here's a look at what happened. On Saturday, April 3rd, Hiller's Varsity Football hosted Medfield in their first home game of the fall two season. The game would be a battle filled with many momentum shifts. Just 90 seconds into action, Medfield senior captain quarterback Ryan Murray connects with senior James Wilder. Line up to the left, lone flanker to the right, he'll throw it to the right, he has a target, and it's James Wilder, there he goes, he is off, 2010 touchdown Medfield. A 65 yard touchdown reception, and just like that it's six to nothing Medfield. A 65 yard touchdown reception, the extra point makes it seven nothing Medfield. Hopkinton responded in their first offensive drive of the game. Two receivers either side, takes the snap, rolls to his right, throws upfield, has a target, it is hauled in, and it's going to be a nice gain here for the Hillers. That should be a first down. Brian Keefe once again coming through. In the right area code. It's going to be a handoff up the middle and into the end zone for a Hillers touchdown, Cam Mulvaney. The Hillers march down the field, 55 yards for a touchdown. Senior captain Cam Mulvaney rushed for the eight yard touchdown and the extra point tied the game up at seven apiece. After forcing a midfield punt, the Hillers offense driving again. Salyard's gonna line it up out of the gun, back to his right, two receivers on either side. Takes the snap, rolls to his right, looks upfield, throws upfield and it's caught by Keith. Along the far side and a nice gain there. That's going to be a first down for the Hillers. Receivers either side. Takes the snap, hands it off, run up the middle, big run up the middle and a touchdown! Cam Mulvaney, an 11 yard Hillers touchdown! The Hillers march 69 yards and fed Mulvaney once again for an 11 yard touchdown run to make it a 14 to seven game. Medfield, however, quickly responded. Murray out of the gun, back to his right. Two receivers either side, takes the snap, looks to his left, airs it out, upfield, has a target, all dead, and there he goes! He's able to escape the tackle and he'll take it all the way to the house. That was the captain, Ben Leonard. Quarterback Ryan Murray found senior captain Ben Leonard Wide open in the middle of the field, Leonard took the reception to the end zone for a 79-yard touchdown. The first quarter ended tied at 14, with Medfield driving into Hiller's territory after forcing a punt. Yards there, a little more yards than I thought. Takes the snap, hands it off, and into the end zone he goes. TJ Casey, an eight-yard touchdown run. A little less than two minutes into the second quarter, Medfield capped off a 60-yard touchdown drive. 
with an eight-yard touchdown run by junior TJ Casey and made it a 21-14 game. The rest of the second quarter was filled with great defensive stops on both sides and the game went into the half with Medfield leading 21-14. In the second half, the Hillers offense got going once again. Takes the snap, he's gonna hand it off, run up the middle, Mulvaney breaking free, here he goes to the 35, fighting his way to the 40, big gain there, Cam Mulvaney, all the way to the 42 yard line, a 22 yard pickup. Salyard's gonna line it up out of the gun, Mulvaney in the backfield, he is going to hand it off, here goes Mulvaney up the middle, fights his way across midfield, to the 45, works up the far side, 40, 35 to the 30, and he is gonna be taken down after a huge gain. Salyard's going to line it up out of the gun, Mulvaney the back to his right, he'll hand it off to Mulvaney, bursting up the middle, breaking a tackle into the end zone. Senior Cam Mulvaney caps off an 80-yard drive with a four-yard touchdown run. The extra point tied the game at 21 apiece. Medfield, however, had a very quick response. And he'll send it sailing, end over end it goes, all the way back to about the five and he lost it. It went off his hands, he dropped it, it is picked up, and now we're gonna have what looks like a very good return up the near side. James Wilder breaking free across midfield. 40, 30, 20, the 10 and into the end zone, wow. Unbelievable, on the kickoff, the initial returner bobbled it and then lost the football, and then James Wilder picks it up and takes it about 95 yards to the house. The extra point made it a 28-21 Medfield lead. Towards the end of the third quarter, the Hillers strung together another touchdown drive. Receiver spread out to either side, takes the snap. Here goes Mulvaney working up the middle, breaks a tackle. And he's going to have a very nice run here as he breaks another tackle. And he gets close to the 10. Okay, 15, I stand corrected. A 12-yard gain. It's certainly a little difficult for us to see the yard lines at that end of the field. Salyard's going to roll to his left, throws to the end zone, has a target, it's hauled in for a touchdown! A 15-yard touchdown reception by Nicholas Sessi. And the extra point from sophomore Avery Ravich made it a 28-28 game. The Hillers possessed the ball for nearly nine minutes to start the fourth quarter and capped off an 88-yard touchdown drive with a 13-yard keeper from senior quarterback Cole Salyards. Back to his right, takes the snap, looks to his right, has time, and now he is going to be in some trouble, runs to his left, finds some space, into the end zone he goes! Cole Salyards! He stood in the pocket looking to pass, and then he said, you know what, the whole left side of the field's open, I'm just going to take this myself. A 13-yard touchdown run. And made it a 35-28 game with the Ravage extra point. Medfield, however, wasn't done yet. In the backfield, that's TJ Casey. Two receivers spread out to either side. Takes the snap, looks up the middle, in trouble, gets rid of it, throws up the middle, has a wide open target, and it's hauled in by Wilder, who will take it to the house. Oh boy, a 51-yard connection between Ryan Murray and James Wilder. And then Murray hit Wilder again on a risky two-point conversion to make it a 36-35 Medfield lead. Three minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the game. Plenty of time for the Hillers. And about two to go for the Hillers. Out of the gun. Salyards rolls to his right and it is off of the hands of one receiver and into the hands of Champlin. So the Hillers will move the chains. Other side. Takes the snap, rolls to his left, looking up field, looking to pass, going to take it himself and he takes it to the house. Touchdown Hillers! After a good mix of gains from the running and passing game, quarterback Cole Salyards took care of business again with a seven yard touchdown run to cap off a 70 yard drive and make it a 42 to 36 game. Medfield with one last opportunity. Left, and now he's gonna roll to his left, 
airs it out, up the field, incomplete. Good defensive coverage by Cole Salyards, and time has expired, and the Hopkinton Hillers take the win, 42-36. The Hillers' defense took care of business on the one play Medfield had time for and took the 42-36 win in perhaps the most action-packed game of the season. Three lead changes took place in the final three minutes and 42 seconds of the incredible game. Quarterback Cole Salyards threw for one touchdown, a 15-yarder. He also had two touchdown runs, a 13 and a 7-yarder, and he had over 100 yards passing. Running back Cam Mulvaney had three touchdown runs, an 8-yarder, an 11-yarder, and a 4-yarder, and he had about 175 yards rushing. The Hillers are now 1-2 and two on the season. Hillers JV football, along with girls volleyball and swimming and dive, we're also in action. Here's a look. Hopkinton Hillers JV football took on Brockton this past Monday. It was a scoreless game until this happened in the second quarter. Stevens out of the gun. Mulvaney to his left. Two receivers either side. Takes the snap. Looks to his left. In trouble. Gets rid of it. Up the left side. Has a wide open target and it's caught. Seamus Murphy going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Hillers. Wyatt Stevens connects with Seamus Murphy for a 56-yard touchdown to make it a 6-0 game. The two-point conversion failed, and it remained a 6-0 Hiller lead heading into the halftime break. In the third quarter, Brockton strung together a drive. Turco out of the gun. He's going to take it himself up the middle, find some room, slips a couple tackles, now breaking free up the right side, and he has a big gain, but did take a massive hit from Sokol. Justin Sokol got in there and just clocked him. Andrew Button on the initial wrap. But in any case, fourth and goal from the one. Here we go. Can the Hillers defense make a big stop? It's going to be a keeper. Turco into the end zone, and this game is tied at six apiece. A one-yard touchdown by Matt Turco caps off the 92-yard drive and ties the game at six apiece. The conversion attempt was no good. The Hillers responded very soon after. And it'll be a end-over-end -end kickoff. Back to the 20-yard line it goes. On the return, it's Carrazza. Here he goes to the near side, the 35, the 40, the 45 across midfield into Brockton territory. The 30, the 20, the 10, and see you later, touchdown Hillers! An 80-yard kickoff return by Joseph Carrazza puts the Hillers right back on top. An 80-yard kickoff return by Joseph Carrazza makes it a 12-6 game. On the two-point conversion attempt, Wyatt Stevens connects with Sergio Melli and makes it a 14-6 game. Brockton responded on their next drive. It's certainly a hurry-up style offense here. Turco going to line it up out of the gun, back to his left, two receivers spread out to either side. He will hand it off and... Finding some room is going to be Powell Jr. There he goes, up the near side into Hiller's territory. The 30, the 20, the 10, and he is going to be brought out of bounds on around the two. And it's rooting on the defense. Out of the gun, double back formation, hands it off to the left back, and right into the end zone goes Mauricio Powell Jr. A four-yard touchdown run by Mauricio Powell Jr. makes it a 14-12 game. Brockton then went for two to tie it up, and the conversion was no good, keeping the game at 14-12. Brockton with their final opportunity to take a lead. Looks like Max Foster is in at quarterback, and he indeed is... Line it up out of the gun. Powell Jr. to his left. A four receiver set. Three receiver spread out to the right. Takes the snap. Looks up the middle. Throws up the middle. And they will not have enough. 
A turnover on downs, and the Hillers hang on for the 14-12 win. Also Monday night, Hillers Swimming posted results for their meet with Holliston Medway. Here's a look. We spent a lot of time watching you swim in this place yeah, and over the years. Yeah, and also getting disqualified, I'm sure. Yes, getting disqualified numerous times. But <laughs> what I remember the most is that when we first dropped you off, you the first time you jumped into the pool, you chipped a tooth. Oh, yes, I do remember Yeah, you remember that? that? Five years old or something, yep. So, um... Ah! Oh, <laughs> Sophia, uh... Sophia Luce is pulling through, uh, definitely a She looks good, the, she looks good. The end of the, uh... We're obviously Grace, rooting kicking, for Deirdre. Yeah. yeah, she's kicking now. She's it's great. moving now. It's moving. We have Pierce, nice. right? Pierce out there in lane six. Oh, wait. Am I in the wrong and then um, lane one showing a lot of speed there, Katie Balster. Yep. The results for the teams should be released soon. Hiller's Varsity Volleyball took on Norwood this past Tuesday night. Hopkinton dominated the first set. Steve Sweetapple on the call. Oh, another block. Great block from Kate. Hillers take the first set 25 to 6 and continued their dominance into the second set. Annoying. Great block. Powers with another. A 25 to 3 second set. The Hillers would finish it off in the third set. Oh, and that's it. Not not a pretty way to end it, but no, the girls will take it. Wow. Twenty-five to sixteen in the third set, and the Hillers take the three-set sweep over Norwood, and improves to eight and one on the season. Taking a look at the upcoming Hopkinton Hillers live sports schedule on Friday, April 9th at six p.m. We'll have. Hillers Varsity Football versus Westwood. And then on Monday, April 12th at 7 p.m., Hillers Swimming takes on Boston Latin. On Thursday, April 15th at 7 p.m., Hillers Swimming takes on Ashland to conclude their fall two season. And on Friday, April 16th at 6 p.m., we conclude the football season with Hillers Varsity Football versus Norwood. Our photo of the week, Hopkinton-based Startland Brewing Company announced the release on Thursday, April 8th of its seasonal marathoner IPA beer, which is dedicated this year to distance running pioneer Bobby Gibb. In the photo, Startline manager Ted Twinney and 26.2 Foundation president Tim Kilduff. The photo was taken by Bruce J. McDonald. Upcoming government meetings on Monday, April 12th at 7 p.m. You can catch the planning board meeting on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, April 13th at 6 p.m., you can catch the select board meeting on HCAM TV. And then on April 15th at 7 p.m., you can catch the school committee meeting on our HCAM Ed channel. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. Don't worry, next Thursday at 6.30 p.m. we'll be back with an all-new episode. Coming up next on HCAM TV is Hopkinton's favorite party planner and chef, Terry Malisi, with a brand new mouth-watering episode of The Gathering. And over on HCAM Ed, starting in moments, is the school committee meeting we thank you for watching HCAM News. Take care, be well, and we'll talk to you again soon.